In this video, we're going to look at the final part of the number puzzle for the 2022 AQA AS Skeleton Code. All right, here's the calculate score subroutine. You can see it takes in the values answer and error count from the number puzzle subroutine. Answer is an array which contains the name of the puzzle, then zero and zero again in the first three positions of the array. These values are all strings. You can see how short this subroutine is. All it's doing is taking the amount of errors the user makes away from the value in the index one position of answer. You can take the assumption that the first so the, the index one position of answer is the score. Back in number puzzle, the new condition, which is part of this nested if statement, checks to see if the solved variable is true. If it is, a message is shown to the user stating they have solved the problem and finished is set to true, which ends the game. However, if it's not, it presents the score to the user if this nested if condition is not met at all, which is the condition of it answer index 2 being greater than 0, then it means that there are no answers to check. So this message is shown to the user. Moving over now to the final part of our favourite subroutine number puzzle. I'm really tired of saying the number puzzle. Uh, we have the option for elif. The user enters s into menu option. Now, according to the PDF file that AQA provided, option S gets the program to enter solve mode, which allows the user to attempt to solve the loaded puzzle. In other words, solve mode is the subroutine that actually lets the user play the game. Let's see how this one works. So the first thing we see in solve puzzle is that the display grid subroutine is called. You can already assume what this one does, but let's look at it. All right, the first thing we see is a print with an empty set of brackets. This outputs a blank line. After that, we can see an entire row of numbers, which we can assume are references to each column. On the next line, we are outputting some symbols. Now, if you look at the PDF file that AQA provided, figure two, which I've put here, shows you what this line is being used for. We've then got an interesting nested loop which contains for loops and if statements. This loop is effectively taking the, net, taking the data sorry, from puzzle grid and filling up our actual grid uh, to produce what we see in figure two. You can see when we reach the end of each 3x3, three three, the borders are placed before the next 3x3 three is three started. This entire subroutine, which is also a procedure, as it doesn't return any values, is presenting the grid to be solved to the user. Let's now go back to solve puzzle to see how the user interacts with the program. All right, so we know the first line will show the puzzle for the user to solve. There is then a validation rule to check that an actual puzzle is showing with the if statement. If there isn't an X in the first two values of the puzzle grid string, then we know that no puzzle is showing, so this is shown to the user, and we leave the subroutine. Remember, um, there was a point where x was placed into a puzzle that was there as to be used as a validation rule. Um, however, if there is an x, then we can enter the else condition, which is where all the real magic happens. The first thing that happens is the user is asked to enter the row, column, and digit. These are three numbers that you can write together with no spaces. First number is for the row, second is for the column, and the third number is for the user's digit. Now remember with the indexing, the first position is zero, second is one, and third is two. They're then given an instruction to present, sorry, they're then given an instruction to press enter in order to stop. Now at this point, I would assume some sort of while loop or indefinite iteration is going to take place here after these enter the digit. And here we go. We can now see the while loop condition. It says it will keep going until the value inside cell info is empty, which to achieve that, you just have to press the enter button, which is actually exactly what the instruction says. I was right. A new variable 
uh, called input error is then set to false, which we can assume means there's no error with user's input for now. Um, remember how I said that user's input must be three numbers? Well, now we've got an if statement checking for exactly this. If the length of cell info is not three, input error is now true. Later on down the code, an output message for invalid input will be displayed and the user will be asked to re-enter their numbers. Up next, in the next lines, we are taking the values out of cell info and placing them into their appropriate variables for row, column and digit. I won't speak on this too much as you've seen this elsewhere in the code already. There's then more validation rules where they check to see if what's in a digit is less than 1 or greater than 9 as we don't accept numbers outside of the range 1 to 9. This type of validation rule or validation check is called a range check. Um, earlier on in the subroutine, we had a length check as we look for the length of the row column digit value. Once we see everything works under the final else, the user's values are placed into the grid. Again, you know how this code works on previous videos. The user is then prompted to enter more numbers until they choose to exit by entering the enter button or return button as their input. Everything the user does here is stored inside puzzle grid. Oh, one more thing. You might be wondering what the line answer index two equals string integer answer index two plus one is doing. Well, this line seems to add up how many entries the user is making. Remember, answer index 2 starts off as 0 initially. Okay, with solve puzzle explained, let's head back to number puzzle. Up next, we've got the option X entered by the user. Well, this just does one thing, and that's changing finished Boolean value into false, which ends the program. But we've got one more thing to look at, and that's what happens if the user enters an invalid response i.e. they don't enter one of the letters shown as the menu options. Well, here comes the else section. Under else, it's pretty easy to see what's happening. There are five possible responses that the user can receive to be informed that they've entered the wrong value and the one they've presented with is chosen at complete random, using the random module. This technique seems almost quite pointless or uh, unnecessary to me. Is it possible the exam uh, you sit at the end of this year asks you to produce something at, at random? Maybe a number or a puzzle to be solved? Who knows? At the end of the program, if the third item in answer is not empty, the results are displayed to the user using the display result subroutine. Let's take a look at this now. All right, first we see an if statement is being used to check if the value in answer position two or index two is greater than zero. If it is, they are showing their score by outputting what's inside answer index one. They are then shown their solution, as in what they did. However, if the above isn't true, chances are this is because the user never made any attempt at the puzzle and so will be presented with the message you didn't make a start. And that's everything you need to know about the AQA AS 2022 skeleton code called Number Puzzle.